This just arrived today. I've been waiting for this one for a while. It was coming FedEx and had some troubles, got lost in the mail. You know the story, blah, blah, blah. No tracking updates or anything. And then when I wasn't home to sign for it, that's when it magically arrived. But luckily, my daughter was, so... She signed for it, and I have it here now. Just got home from work. It's been waiting for me. Let's get this open and see what's in there. Okay, for whatever reason, it didn't come in like a Grand's Force Brux box. It was just packaged in that box from Jack's, I guess, is who I ordered it from, with a bunch of this paper in there. So I laid it out. This is what was in there. Now from what I heard, Jax uh, is a licensed dealer of Grands Force Brooks. They're out of Colorado, I believe. Uh, Jax Mercantile Company. And you can also go to jaxgoods.com. But they're one of the few places I found that had these in stock and I have been wanting one of these for an extremely long time. Uh, the knife is made in Sweden, Grandsforce Brooks, Sweden, or Brook, you might pronounce it, Grandsforce Brook, I'm not sure. Looks like it's stamped in there and has some ink. Okay, it's got a, I see the leather sheath right off the bat. Set this aside up here. Here's the little book tied with a little piece of twine. And this comes with all their axes. I already have this book because I have the uh, Kuban, the little hand, tiny little hand hatchet. Yep, they even have a list. Here's the axe I just bought. Some of these smiths that forge these axes. This is your guarantee that you get with any axe or hatchet you purchase from them. 20 year guarantee. And that's what I paid. Jax actually had them in stock. So I picked one up. And I guess you can get these in multiple different grinds also. Now from what I hear, depending on how much carving you're going to do and all that you can get the axe that has it's a uh, what do you want to call it kind of like convex on one side and then the other side's almost almost not totally but almost flat if you're right-handed then it'll work you know to carve with your right hand this side would be flat out here would be more convex and you'd be like Ch -ch -ch, and it you'd carve with it. And then they make another one that's the exact opposite of that if you are left-handed. So then you'd be like, this would be the flat side. This would be the more rounded convex side. And it works like that. I don't do a whole, a whole lot of carving. I like bushcraft and uh, splitting kindling and little pieces of wood and things like that, making feather sticks and a little carving, but not a super lot of carving. So I wanted the symmetrical grind where it was the same convex on both sides. And that's what I opted for, and that's what I got. And I think that's how the original ones come too. Now another thing before I take this uh, sheath off, I wanted you to take a look at this handle if it'll show up. See how rough that handle is? That's because they do like a uh it's almost like a striping or a ribbing but then it has these like little notches in it also and that's for grip and you can really feel it i mean not only does it have this kind of like swoop here with a nice swell down here at the bottom so your hand doesn't slip off but it has that texture now i've heard some people say they really don't like it they even thought it was a flaw like a cheap hickory handle but no, that is that is done on purpose, and it's not cheap at all. They purposely did that for grip. 
and it looks like my grain is okay. It's not perfect. I would have liked to have had a very straight grain. And you can see that this one is it's okay. It's not terrible. There is a little runoff here. But I've noticed that on a lot of videos that I watch from Grands First Brooks, a lot of their handles have that. So maybe they're not A1 quality hickory, but but there's the sheath. We'll just take a quick look at it. It's got a thin leather welt. Certainly not the world's thickest sheath. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rivets. And then a matching snap, matching buckle. And it has the Grands Force Brooks uh, logo. And it says GBA. So yeah, pretty nice. It's, it's not low quality at all. It's a nice leather sheath. Ooh, it smells nice too. Nice leather smell. I think I just sucked some up my nose. <laughs> okay, let's look at the axe head, because that's really the axe. Got some leather on there. Let me wipe that off real quick. Boy, look at that. They got some forging scale left on there, as you can see. It says Grandsforce Brooks Sweden because these are made in Sweden. It's got a big old uh, pommel on it there. And it says the person, they got the Grandsforce Brooks logo stamp there. And then EE -E is who made this one. And I've seen some videos where people have like a a metal wedge along with the wood wedge. So I think some of them used to come with that or maybe the people added it themselves, I don't know. But mine is just a wood wedge. And I have some round metal wedges and I also have some straight metal wedges. So if I ever need to put one in, I have them. But it looks like it is seated in that eye very tightly. I don't see any gaps. Let me look at this bottom here. Some light on there. Nope, that that is in there snug. Snugly, snugly. Yeah, looks like it looks like it's very well done. Okay, we'll play around till focus time wants to happen again. Okay, here we go. It looks pretty straight on the bottom. Yep. Here's the tip. Looks like it's hung right. Wow, I can't get nothing in focus. There we go. You can see that swelled out convex edge there on both sides because mine is the, the standard. See that shows up at all. And I think this will suit me a lot better for my purposes. Looks like some of the forging scale might have got scraped off there. That's fine. I was kind of hoping it would look a little darker up to this edge and this would be a little bit more of a mirror polish. But it's a satin. Got some. Looks like it might have a touch of oil on it. But you're seeing this the first time I'm seeing it too. This one. So yeah, we're looking at it together. I thought this space might be a little larger because my big old finger, you can see, only chokes up to about there. But still. I like that you can choke up on these to do carving. That'll help me with the feather sticking and some of the things I do. And who knows, I probably will carve a couple spoons or something just to see see what I think of it. But I just, I really liked it. I think it's a two pound head. And a lot of my other hatchets are like one and a quarter to one and a half. 
which is great. But I was like, this one has the larger, like, four-inch blade, I believe. It might even be a little over four inches, which is great. The more blade, the better. It's got a little extra weight, so you can just pick this up and just kind of let its own weight just kind of fall when you're chopping and doing light splitting, and that'll come in very handy for me. It's, it's really, from what I'm seeing, it's beautiful. It's got a lanyard hole there. I'm sitting here wondering if I want to put a little ranger band on it, maybe just up here. I'd cut it out, you know, for there. I would want to stop it there because I don't want to hide this. Although, if I covered that, it would always be protected under there, you know, keeping it looking like new. And then I would probably put another piece like down in this area somewhere, maybe up to like here. And that would be plenty. Leave this bottom and leave this little knob at the bottom. But yeah. Okay, the sheath, we'll put it on back on real quick. I'm pretty sure you have to do the bottom first. So let me check here, see if that is the case. Yeah, I believe that's the case. Or maybe it's the exact opposite. Maybe you do the top first. That's what it is. You put the top in first, yeah. and then once it's in there, you pull this over, and it ain't coming off. It might loosen up a little bit over the years, but that's, that is on there. Okay, <clears throat> we'll go over some of the parts of an axe real quick uh, for the proper terminology because I'm going like the top, the bottom, blah, blah, blah. But this is the toe. This is called the bit. This is called the heel. This right in here is called the cheek. And uh, this is the eye. That the uh, not this hoop right here, but this hole where the uh, handle goes through. That's the eye of the axe head. Okay, then you have the area right here called the beard. This is the pole or the pommel on the back, like the hammer portion. These are called the lip that hang down, or sometimes the lug. I actually think these would be better called the cheek, even though the cheek's more up here. But whatever. Okay, and then as if you want to get technical with the wood handle, I don't know why you would. But if you do, this is considered the shoulder up here. And I, I believe this is the throat. And then this is the belly down here. And then this is just called the knob usually. And sometimes people will call this wood area the eye also, but I call the hole in the axe the eye, but what's the difference? It's the eye. It looks like an eye. <laughs> like an eyeball, kind of like the outside shape. But yeah, man, this is beautiful. Look at that texture when I hit the light. Like right here, you can't really see it. But then it's like, is there texture on that? Dun -dun! Oh yeah, there's texture on that. Look at that. Wow, that's gorgeous. And this is why I've been wanting one for so long, because the, the attention to detail is just above and beyond. And this looks really good. I haven't seen how sharp it is yet. So I guess we'll do some measurements of our own and do a sharpness test. Okay, the cutting edge of the blade. Right there. And it travels the whole way to there. So it's four and three quarters. Yeah, close to five inches. That is a big, big blade. It just gives you a lot of uh, edge to work with, you know? And I really like that. Then you got the pommel here or the pole. It's about, I'd say, what is that? Two and three eighths. Just over two and a quarter. And the I'll have to stand it up for this. Okay, you're looking at just a hair under an inch for the width of the pole. Okay, the length of the head from the pole all the way up to the bit is five and five eighths. So, yeah, not bad at all. 
And you can see this bottom sticks out farther and the top kind of curves back. So it might even be a hair more if you come up, like angle it like that, you know. Which I think is kind of cheating a little bit, but <laughs> we're clear up to five and three quarters there. So yeah. And the handle is kind of an oval shape. It's wider this way and thinner this way, and that really locks it into your hand. Feels good. Just from just from holding it. I haven't been out chopping with it or anything. Yep. 14 and a quarter inch. A little higher if you came clear up here to the to this high toe on the blade there. Thinking about right there. You come the whole way down. Look at that. You're looking at 15 and three quarters, probably, almost 16. So, yeah, it's listed as 14 inches because the wood handle from here to here is about 14. So, you know. I could see this baby getting a little tiring. Like especially if you held it way down here because it feels very front heavy, obviously. But if you come up to the middle, it feels better. You come way up here, not bad at all, you know. Choke up on it, do some carving. And I think this will be a welcome addition. But yeah, looks good. It's like everything looks so wonky when I'm trying to film it on my phone. But yeah, it's actually pretty straight. Looks really good. Let's do a uh, paper cutting test just for the heck of it. Not that you need an, an axe to be paper cutting sharp, but we'll do it just to do it. Okay, <clears throat> here it is straight out of the box. Haven't even wiped some of that oil off. Just a sheet of printer paper. Let's see how sharp it came. <clears throat> oh, geez. Now, I know you do want an axe to be on the sharp side when it is a carving axe. And this is definitely... There might be a little burr right there. Eh, maybe not. I might have just been tipping the axe at too much of an angle. That's probably what it was. Because when I straighten it up... That's pretty sick. Jeez. Wow. Look at that cut. Are you kidding me? That was so nice. They named it twice. Let's do it one more time. Just because it was freaking awesome. Oh, jeez. I wish you guys could feel this. This is... This is like a... Uh, a Swedish Mora knife, or even like a Finnish type knife from Finland. It's just, even though it's a convex grind, not a Scandi grind, it is just stupid sharp. Look at that. I think the paper is making it more sharp. <laughs> okay, it took me a little bit. But right up in the front of the book, here is a list of some of the initials of the smiths that forged your axe. So you can look at the initials on here and then go down and find them and see who made yours. Mine says E.E. -E. And I'm like, who would that be? It's Emil Ingberg. I guess that's how you pronounce it. So that is the one who forged my carving axe and it, from what I've seen so far it looks like they did a great job I think my little Cuban was MM it was uh, which I don't see listed right here but I remember the name it was Matthias Matson, who did my little Cuban hand axe or hand hatchet and this one is Emil Ingberg so there you have it. So that's cool to know. I like to know stuff like that.
Okay, I'm trying to think. Did I cover everything? I, I will do a size comparison for the, literally for no good reason. Just for the heck of it. So here we go. Okay, here it is beside my little uh, bison made in Germany. Little hatchet. And I think it has a full four inch blade. It's a decent little hatchet. I've used it a couple times, but you can see this one has, it should only be about three quarters larger, but it definitely seems larger. This one might just be a hair under four inches, but it's a neat little, neat little hatchet. I've used it once or twice and I really liked it. American hickory handle, but the head is forged in Germany. I believe they're hand forged too, very similar to the Grand's, Grand's Force. And the size and the length isn't too different. This is noticeably heavier. And the little bison one does come with a nice, nice little sheath. Actually quite good kind of almost like a suede but I keep it stored like this with oil on it to keep the carbon steel protected when I'm not using it of course okay now we're just getting stupid this isn't even an axe it's a tracker knife <laughs> thought I'd throw that in there just for size comparison okay I'm losing the daylight you can probably tell by my video it's getting darker by the second and I have a lamp but when I turn it on it it's such an ugly colored light. It actually distorts the way things actually look. But I think I might have to do it. Okay, this is it under the lamp light. It's not my favorite light, but at least you can see everything. Now, Jax is just the company who stocked these and I bought them from out of Colorado. But they're not, they're just a licensed dealer of Grands Force Brooks which is a Swedish company. I'm gonna wipe the oil off the edge here and take a quick look at it. Okay, here it is with some of that grease wiped off and you can see it, even though it's a satin finish, it does reflect the light quite well on that blade edge. Like it's got a decent, nice polish on it. I don't see any chips or anything. You saw how sharp it was when it cut paper. If I changed anything about it, maybe I would just bring this over a hair so that my big old finger could fit up in there a little better, but I mean, it's fine. Yeah, this is, I have this gut feeling that this is gonna end up being my favorite ax. This and the little Cuban. They're just so, so good can see it's not super thick on the bottom. I actually thought the bottom was going to be like thicker than that. But the top and the bottom are not nearly as thick as I thought they would be. I guess that's because of it being a carving axe. All I knew of it was just other videos and other photos of it that I've seen. But I think it I think it looks quite nice. I like that it has the, uh, I'm trying to think what it's called, the symmetrical grind on it. So it's like the, the convex on both sides, which I think looks the best in my opinion. It's not just about looks though. I think it's hopefully going to come in the best for me for, for feather staking and for splitting kindling and things like that. Because I'll use it for bushcraft more than I'll ever use it for carving spoons or anything but i do want to try my hand at that but yeah just i'm trying to take it all in it's very nice looks like they did a very good job on it quite happy with it and this is just the uh, black uh kind of forging scale on it it's actually quite symmetrical and nice can see the lamp making everything look weird and peachy again. Yeah, it's like I don't want to quit talking about it. I like it so much. But this is the Grand's Force Brook Sweden 
carving eggs. And you can pick them up now for just a hair over $200. And I think they're worth every penny. I hope you enjoyed this video and this unboxing review. Maybe someday soon, maybe I'll get it outside and you'll actually get to see me putting it to some use. That's my hope anyways. This is Joe Doomsday signing out.